Hello and welcome back to module 11, video two. All right, so we left off with DHCP snooping configuration. So I just wanted to show you the, um, the topology here. When you have a DHCP server connected to the switch, the port that it's connected to, we're gonna, that's gonna be the trusted port. All other ports such as a PC is gonna be untrusted and we are configuring it. All right, so going back to our notes, so the solution for DHCP snooping um, is that number one, you de devices under the administrative control, so that's an advantage, are trusted sources, uh, trusted interfaces such as trunks, links, and the server ports must be explicitly configured, and devices outside the network, all access ports are untrusted. Okay, just like I showed you in the um, in the previous topology a dacp table is built that includes the source mac address we always do that that's what snooping does with the source mac address of the device of an untrusted port and the ip address assigned by the dhcp server to keep track of it the mac address and the ip address are bound together and therefore the table is called the dacp snooping binding table so when you enable dhcp snooping it's going to do these two points. Remember, you're copying all of these notes, right? All right, here's an example. Um, so what you do is you type DHC, IP DHCP snooping at the global configuration mode. You go to the interface of the one where the server is located and you type IP DHCP snooping trust. Okay, so which means that um, DHCP discover and offering and all of that wonderful stuff will be, a, you know, an offer will come out of this will be allowed. If you are untrusted, you will not allow any of the DHCP offer to come out of that port. You're blocking it. All right, so you can go to ranges five to 14 and you can say IP DHCP snooping limit rate is five. So on untrusted port, you will limit the number of DHCP discovery messages, the DHCP discover. If you get more than five of them, they're not allowed. All right, five per second. So if you see more than five per second, okay, you'll block them. So that's good. And then you top exit. That's pretty much it. You could also do IPD ACP snooping for the VLANs, VLAN 10, VLAN 5, comma, and 10 to 30. So you could do that. So you can enable snooping per VLAN. You don't have to do it for everyone. All right. You can also type exit. Remember, that means these commands are on the global configuration. You can also uh, type, actually, this is on an interface. No, on the global. Then you type show IP DACP snooping to verify the DACP snooping setting. Show DACP snooping binding to view the clients that have been received DACP information. So I hope we can be, we'll be able to do all of these different types of medications that we're talking about in this chapter in a class activity. All right, so we'll do all of this and we'll practice it. All right, how do you mitigate the ARP attacks? Uh, the dynamic ARP inspection is the best way to go. So in a typical ARP attack, a threat actor can send unsolicited, you know, gratuitous ARP replies to other hosts on the subnet with the MAC addresses. If this is the man in the middle that I told you about. You send in an unsolicited ARP reply to the victim telling them you know your default gateway is me the attacker and you go to the default gateway and you tell them uh the mac address of the victor has this has my ip address so which means the default gateway anytime they want to reach the victim they'll send the data to you and when the victim wants to reach his default gateway they send the, the data to you right and you just send it to the default the gateway back and forth with a man in the middle you'll be able to see all the data so what the dynamic ARP inspection does is it requires DACP snooping. So you do the DACP snooping just like we did before. And that's going to help prevent the ARP attacks. You do the trusted and untrusted ports. All right. By doing that, you're and also you're not going to rely on invalid or unsolicited gratuitous ARP replies out of other ports in the CV land. You're going to be intercepting all ARP requests and reply on untrusted ports. So anybody does any unsolicited 
Pop request, you're going to catch them and check them out. You're going to verify each interest, intercepted packet and check out their IP and MAC address binding. Remember, the, because we created uh, up here, we create, um, where are we? Here, a table, a snooping table, a DACP snooping table, right? So you're going to double check and verify. And you're going to drop dropping and logging ARP replies coming from an invalid to prevent ARP poisoning. So what you're going to do is you're going to check the MAC addresses all unsolicited ARP requests, and if they don't match anything in the table, you can knock them out. All right, error disabling the interfaces. So that means they're going to be shut down, and you have to go in, figure out why it went shut down because of security of breach, and then to re-enable them, remember, you have to do what? Shut down again, and then no shut. All right, so here's an example of how to do that. IPDACP snooping, snooping on VLAN number 10, and do the inspection on VLAN 10. This is DACP and ARP inspection are needed for PCs on VLAN 10. This is all done for VLAN 10 on the global configuration mode. And then you go to the interface, let's say 024, and you can say you're, you are trusted port, right? And you can type IP DACP inspecting trust. The uplink going towards the server port of the router is trusted and therefore is configured as a trusted DACP snooping and ARP. So this port is where your DACP server is going to be connected. It could be your router, of course. All right. A, uh, then you type in IP ARP inspection, validate the source and validate the destination MAC address along with the IP. So you're checking out the table to make sure um, that they, that everything is okay, right? Packets when the IP addresses are, if they are invalid or not. All right, now let's get into the STP, the spanning tree. If you remember, um, uh, the network attackers can manipulate the spanning tree to conduct an attack by spoofing the root bridge, right? We talked about that on the last chapter and changing the topology. So they, the attacker can become the, uh, the root bridge, and then all the networks will go to the root, this attacker, before they send their data, and they'll be, the attacker will be able to capture all the data. Another man-in-the-middle attack. So we want to make sure um, we can stop that. How do you do that? How do you mitigate against STP attack? Is you use port fast and the bridge protocol data unit card on the interfaces on the interfaces of the hosts, the edge ports, or the end ports, we call them. So port fast, when you enable port fast on the edge ports, is going to bring the port immediately to forwarding state from blocking. You're going to skip the learning and the listening. Remember that? And it's going to apply, you want to apply that to all end, access, all end user access ports, all the edge ports. The BPDUs are... Uh, PPDU guard immediately error disable port if it receives a PDU. So if an attacker sends in a PPDU, a bridge protocol data unit to say, hey, uh, I have a bridge ID that is lower than everybody else, immediately the guard is going to shut down the interface, right? Use the error disable. That means you're going to have to go in again, shut it down and re-enable it and find out what happened. Like port fast, PPDU should only be configured on the edge ports on the PCs, not on the trunks. All right, so here's an example on how to do that. Let's say on fast Ethernet 01, that's an access port, right? That's where the hosts are. You say spanning tree port fast, and then you say spanning tree BPDU guard enable. All right, globally, you could do that too to all the interfaces. So, and then you can re-enable them if you want to use trunks. So you can, on the Config mode, you can do port fast default, that's for everybody. And then you can do port fast BPDU default, that's also for all the interfaces as well. All right, error recovery cause uh, psecure underscore violation. This is a globally command to manually re enable a shutdown ports. So if you get, you know, this is one command in one shot that we re enable all the shutdown ports in one shot instead of going per port and typing shutdown and then no shut. All right. 
All right, that's it for chapter 11. So please take these notes down and submit them as homework. So all these commands for chapter 11, I know I had you write everything, are very important. So I hope that we'll um, do a class activity that will cover and you'll get to see all of these in action. And of course, we're going to do the physical lab, packet tracer labs, as, you know, as well, the hands-on lab. So um, you'll get a lot of experience. This is very important. So make sure these notes are always handy with you. All right, so these are examples that you can do. All right, anyway, so um, write the notes, submit them, and I will see you on the next chapter.